Okay, so week seven of the 2023 NFL season just passed, and there were a ton of great performances, some good games, but overall one, or I guess a group of characters, kind of just took over this week. <laughs> <laughs> this team, man, ugh. This team is going to break me. Do you want another Saints rant? Because I'll do it. I'll f***ing do it. The Jaguars should have lost this game plain and simple. With an injured Trevor Lawrence on a short week and with Calvin Ridley deciding to just finger himself in the corner for the entire game, this was the matchup where even if only for a minute, it, the Saints would make people think, hmm, uh, hey, the NFC is really wide open. Maybe the Saints could make some noise in the playoffs. But God damn it, that didn't happen. Even after the Saints offense just continued to run in place, suffering from the same issues as before, for with Carr and Pete Carmichael just taking a fat f***ing sh over everything, because this team is still loaded with good football players, the Saints got back into the game, and because the Jaguars are still the Jaguars at heart, we got ourselves a football game going into the fourth quarter. I mean, the Saints had a real chance to change everything in this game, but this play, this one play early in the fourth just ended it all, in my opinion. This one moment is the most Saints thing I've seen since last week. Not only does Chris Olave just quit on his route, but the O-line gets exposed as per usual. Derek Carr looks off two damn near unguarded wide receivers that would have gotten a free first down, and just to polish off this sensational sequence, Derek Carr just floats the John seven feet out of bounds and then gets mad at his receiver. Nice. And the Foster Moreau drop at the end of the game was, was just overkill. I mean, Josh Allen was in takeover mode the entire game, feasting on Andres Pete from the first snap to the last. <laughs> listen, 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 Saints fans. Just, I, I know Derek Carr has been awful this year, and at, at this point, you might as well go for a quarterback change, but... Derek Carr, when he's playing at his best, is behind five big dudes who can protect him. And when he feels secure, he'll be able to go through his progressions and hit the wide open receiver. But when he's pressured, the man just gets panicked and says, F*** it. I'll just check it down every single time. And that's what's happening with this Saints offense. Ah, I'm done. Ah, that's the last Saints rant for a while, I, I swear. But, um, just give up at this point. Put Jameson. Just try it. For those of you who've been around this channel for a minute now already, you might know that I am actually a Raiders fan, and although I'm not super thrilled that we just lost to a Division II quarterback and the second worst coach in the NFL, I'm not actually that upset, because... I saw this game coming from a mile away. It's just what we do. We don't win games like these. It happened versus the Bears at home with the Gruden thing. Same thing against the Jets with Sam Darnold. Same thing against the Falcons. Hell, the Saints last year. I mean, how many of these games do we have to lose before people realize, oh, this is just how the Raiders operate? I don't want to talk about this game. Uh, Devontae's drop in the end zone just basically summed up the entire thing perfectly. So, another week and... Uh, this, this man's still the head coach. I, I just, I, I want to ask Mark Davis, what more does Josh McDaniels have to do to get fired? Because the man has checked off every single box possible, and at this point, he's just creating new ones for fun. My god, to me, this was the most shocking game of the entire season so far. The Ravens, who have been terrorized by injuries and lost to the Steelers, versus another team that has some of the same issues, but has also dealt with the adversity much, much better. And the Ravens just came out and Lamar... Uh, Lamar. Just a primal slaughtering. The biggest win the Ravens have had in terms of a momentum turner for the season in a long time. And if Lamar can keep up this unguardable style of play in this new offense he looks super comfortable in already this early in the season, the Ravens might be a sleeper Super Bowl contender once they get fully healthy. Or... You know, if they get fully healthy. Nothing else needs to be said, and you've heard me say it before, but just fix it, Detroit. Don't let this happen again, and we'll just pretend like this game never happened. They whooped our ass, plain and simple. Well, I was wrong about the commanders. I was wrong about the defense. I was wrong about the offense. Everything about this team that I believed was going to be at least slightly above average is just trash. Uh, simply put, these were two musty-ass football teams, and the commanders looked slightly worse 
than the Giants, playing lazy defense against Waller and Barkley mainly, and the Hogs did a perfect job of making Sam Howell want to pick up a noose on the way home. I, I, dude, five completions and five sacks at halftime is how you end someone's career. The second half, things slightly improved for Washington, but it didn't matter, because obviously the game had to end with a commander's drop pass. But no, let's, let's blame Sam Howell for a slightly underthrown ball, even though he had a wild animal hunting him down 0.03 seconds after snapping the ball. But, even with all of that, th this game just didn't matter. If either of these teams find themselves in the playoffs, then uh, somebody must have died. Uh, the Giants are just satisfied with this win, and the Commanders are stuck with a bad coaching staff and a bad team for an entire season playing some boring-ass football. This was the most Falcons game I've seen in a hot minute. Uh, confuse the enemy and everyone watching by having Bijan not be out there, check. R refuse to pass the ball to Kyle Pitts for pretty much the whole game, check. Kill drives with awful play calling, hint. <laughs> <laughs> this screen pass to Keith Smith was uh, creative, but check, and of course, Desmond Ritter just decided to enter Deshaun Jackson mode mid-play and gave away a free touchdown, check. Just like old times, nobody beats the Falcons better than the Falcons do. Um, except for Baker Mayfield, because <laughs> man, the dude was bad. But the rest of the offense was too, and the play calling continues to be pedestrian at best. Uh, and this is about to be a hot take here, but... I don't think the Bucks are very good. It just, I don't know. It almost feels like they're they're missing like one piece. If only they had one more player, then maybe everything could be okay. <sighs> Somehow, the Falcons pulled a massive victory for the division out of Arthur Smith's ball sack. But the Bucks have uh, so many issues to figure out, and they ain't getting solved this season. So enjoy your unforgettable year where you finish second or third in the division, miss the playoffs, fire Todd Bowles, then beg Bruce Arians to get on a moped and coach again. Did anything go how it was supposed to go in the early slate of games? I mean, both Bills fans and Patriots fans have to just be confused beyond the known limit. Is Mac Jones good again? Is the O-line good again? Are the Bills no longer contenders all of a sudden? Hell, even I don't know. But I will say watching this game, I really believe that if Matt Milano was here in pads and not in spirit form, the Bills would have won this game. The defense was clicking at times, but it came at exactly when the offense was lost. And when the offense, I mean Josh Allen, did things, the defense was busy getting their backs blown out by Mac f***ing Jones. I don't even know what else to say. I guess Bill's about to be here for another 63 years once he gets another body, and Mac really looked for real on that last drive. Making confident throws and good reads, it's just... For me, it's nowhere near enough to wash away the Patriots' past sins. If this team is a failure because of the injuries and poor O-line play, then Pats fans can live with that. As long as the Bills still knows how to coach a football game, who the hell knows what's in the cards for this crumbled empire? As for the Bills, this game kind of just felt like a trap game. It was a test that they failed, and... I think it's time that, with all these injuries piling up, we have to accept the fact that the Bills just aren't a true Super Bowl contender. They're a good playoff team, yes, but uh, there's a very, very big difference between them and teams like the Chiefs. <coughs> now, I said the Ravens game was the most surprising to me of the season, but did anyone out there expect this game to have any team score over 16 points? Because I sure as hell didn't expect a goddamn shootout between offenses led by PJ Walker and Gardner Minshew. The game was pretty wild back and forth, whatever, Miles Garrett's pretty solid at basketball, I guess. The man literally almost single-handedly won this game for the Browns. Uh, almost, because that ending. I mean, this two-play sequence was just one of the most poorly officiated ending plays I've seen in hours. I am sorry, Indy. I am so, so sorry. A win was simply just taken from the Colts and given to the Browns. And uh, talk about sympathy for the enemy. The Browns have been in this exact opposite situation damn near more than any other franchise. So they're just as confused as I am as to why for the second week in a row, this team has just turned into the NFL's favorite franchise. And the thing is, this win was actually just enormous for the Browns to stay competitive in the AFC North as well. And... And yes, Cosby clocked into work, ripped off two of the worst passes I've ever seen, then went home, but uh, a win is a win. I just, I, I can't understand this. The Browns, the Cleveland Browns are getting favorited by the NFL. What, what the f***?
the definition of a forgettable late NFL game. Well, once again, the referees were just on one here, and the Seahawks just picked up one of their two free wins against the Cardinals, and that, that Seahawks defense is just... I'm jealous. I, I am. Well, why can't the Raiders just draft even average? Devin Witherspoon and Tariq Woolen are just going to haunt the league for the next five years at least. And did, did they seriously just rebuild the Legion of Boom that quickly, or at least a core of it? Other than that, guess what? The Cardinals suck, and Kyler Murray will ruin the tank, so let's just have him sit on his ass for a little longer, and maybe for some insurance. Let's just take our time on James Conner. No reason to rush anything, Arizona. Just... Just make sure that you don't lose all your fans, I guess. This game had potential to be a true Chiefs vs. Chargers shootout, but it turns out one quarterback has minus one finger and the other quarterback has a Travis Kelsey, and I, I don't know, I, I felt like I really didn't have to write much more down for this game than this word. There's simply not too much to say. The better football team won, and they won convincingly. The, the Chiefs did what the Chargers did, but better. From quarterback to receiving to defense to coaching, they were just thoroughly outclassed. And now, the Chargers find themselves near the bottom of the AFC West, behind the Raiders, and next to Denver. Oh, f Chargers. I, I can't believe it. I, ca I can't believe I actually fell for the trap again. I thought the Chargers were going to be good, but one of these days, maybe I'll learn. I feel like this was just a replay of Raiders vs Broncos in week one, except Denver fumbled themselves into three more points, but luckily the Broncos also lucked into a win because they found a team worse than them. I, crazy concept, right? But the, the Packers might actually just be the worst team in the NFC. We'll see what happens when they play the Bears near the end of the year, but until then, I... I really am not entirely sure what happened to Jordan Love. He's just playing like there's a gun pointed to his head at all times. It's a situation where one play I'm blaming the receivers, the next I'm blaming Love, and then one more, and it's both and the coach's fault. And when you throw in more and more injuries into this festering pot, what you get is a god-awful football team. The real question is, do I do I do it? Do I put the Packers into the Caleb Williams sweepstakes? Are they actually in contention for the number one pick? I'm not sure, but nah, I'll do it. Welcome, Green Bay. Welcome to the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. It's, it's good to have you. And, you know, from that perspective, good job beating the Broncos in that tank bowl. It was, it was definitely one of the football games of all time. <laughs> yeah, boy. How do they keep doing this? I, I do not understand. It's every win with this Steelers team. You're watching them play. They look like absolute <laughs> They're losing for 95% of the game, and then when the clock strikes zero, you look at the scoreboard and you go, oh, <laughs> the Steelers won. It's just so funny to see the Steelers literally become the complete opposite of the exact team they would have lost to six or seven years ago. I mean, Mike Tomlin needs to be examined or something, because this dude has some sort of spell casted on him with the way this team is playing. The Steelers should not be anywhere near the playoffs, but here we are, and I guess Pittsburgh's just got the division on locks, and Matt Canada is an offensive prodigy. And on the other side of the field, the Rams are pretty good, but uh, this team is just constantly getting in their own way, and can't seem to solve their overarching problem of consistency. Uh, the refs definitely botched the ending sequence as... I guess is the norm this week, but if they cleaned up multiple issues throughout the game leading to the ending, then this scenario wouldn't have even came up. Also, this guy. It, it, he really helped quite a lot in losing the game, so get rid of him. Now, please, after all of his f***-ups, I'd be shocked if Money Maher's confidence ever returns. The Blair Walsh effect is really taking its course on the dude, and it turns out, once the game ended, seven points in missed field goals and PATs would have been decently important, but whatever. In conclusion, the Steelers are winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> Well, well, well. The most hyped up game of the entire season so far, at least, finally came and it sort of did and didn't live up to expectations. Some people thought this game was about to be the shootout to end all shootouts, but that ain't how the Eagles play football. This game was a grind from Philly from the beginning to the end, and their defense did a damn good job of limiting the Dolphins offense. Uh, when they weren't benefiting from some pretty bad no calls and some drop passes by a Hall of Famer. I really hate to be that guy, but this whole week was just by far the worst we've had in terms of officiating. I, this game wasn't even close to the Browns one, but like, dude, 
10 penalties to zero in this game. Not saying Miami wasn't committing penalties, because they were, but like, I don't know, man. This doesn't look like zero penalties to me. Other than that, Miami just looked, dare I say, nervous out there. It seemed like they really weren't ready for the bright lights yet, but maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. They got their weaknesses exposed with the Eagles shutting down the run game, taking advantage of their injured O-line, and then torch their unnamed secondary on the other side of the field, both of which problems can be solved. I really don't think this was a terrible loss for you, Miami. Philly is just simply playing on another level right now, but if you are super dedicated in trying to become a true contender, then your true test comes in two weeks, so get ready for that, I guess. Uh, what's going on here? Through the first five weeks, it looked pretty clear to me, at least, that the 49ers were the best team in the league, but the Vikings? I, I, I know Debo was out, and way more importantly, the engine of the offense in Trent Williams was banished as well. I, I don't care, though. Did you know that Minnesota also doesn't have their best player out there? There is no excuse here. If you're going to be a great team this season, you cannot lose games like these. This elite, unstoppable San Francisco defense was making Captain Kirk look like a prime Montana, and when Addison and TJ Hawkinson got hurt like four times, they didn't even slow down their offensive output whatsoever. And Kirk did what he wanted when he wanted on offense, and for the 49ers, Purdy just continues to struggle under pressure, and without Trent, the man panicked into just so many terrible, terrible decisions. But because the Vikings just have too much f fun doing sh like this, the 49ers still had a solid chance to win the game. However, in what might come up way later down the road in the playoffs, the two-minute drill is a true weakness for this team. Not only can Brock Purdy not get the ball downfield basically at all, but this team does not have that Emmanuel Sanders, Marquise Goodwin type player that they've had in the past, so the formula to beat the 49ers continues to be to just limit the run game and put pressure on Purdy until he breaks. But before we go, it's time to turn to you, the people, and see what you thought were the biggest highlights of this week, so allow us to commence the Tub Frog Discord Awards. And if you want to vote on the best and worst players and whatnot from every week, then join the Discord. The link's in the description. But with that, you all chose Jordan Addison's ripaway touchdown on Charvarius Ward as the best play of the week, beating out Jake Bobo's catch in Puka's toe tap. Then the best game of the week was unanimously the Browns vs. Colts Fiesta. The best single player performance was pretty neck and neck between Lamar Jackson and Miles Garrett, but Lamar just barely edged out the win by a singular vote. The worst team performance was pretty obviously the Detroit Lions. Uh, the worst individual performance was the most dominant poll we've ever had, and with Mac Jones having a good game, the title is finally bestowed upon another man. This time, the refs. Just all of them were putting on a show this week. It was a tough scene. And then I asked you guys what your favorite pizza chain was, and um, once again, it was a tight contest, but Pizza Hut got the win. Wow. I just gotta say, you guys are sleeping on Greg's Grill out there. Uh, anyways, if you like this video, then watch this video right here that I just did, showing the misery of the Chargers organization. It's pretty good, trust me. And if you like this video, then maybe consider subscribing. But anyways... <sighs> Until next time.